If you've been in the drywall industry in the past couple years, or if you've just kind of been casually watching, you've seen skimming blades come out, and they are awesome. So when we look at a skimming blade, it essentially has a stainless steel blade that's coming out, which allows us to smooth and make large areas nice and flat. They come in a variety of sizes. Uh, level five makes as small as a seven, and then they go all the way up to a 48 inch. My size of choice is a 24, and then a 32 is also a great size to have on hand, especially for smoothing out large areas like butt joints or trying to feather into existing textures or remodels. They have a bunch of different things that you can do that make them awesome. First things first, the blades are replaceable. So if you drop this, you destroy it, you just remove these end caps here and you can replace the whole blade. Another thing is, is they have these nice rounded edges, which make it so you're not digging in with super square sharp parts when you're feathering out large areas. So when we look at using different sizes, a seven through a 16 are great for wiping and feathering tape. Um, they're really good for small areas. And then when we look at going over existing textures, doing a whole big level five finish, we're gonna wanna be getting into the bigger blades like the 24s, 32s, 48s. These do come with handles if you so choose. The largest I would go with using a handle would be a 32. The 48s kind of get a little floppy sometimes, so um, 32 is the largest size I would go with the handle. So let's go ahead and get into our mud consistency and ways to apply the mud, and then we'll apply it to the wall and see how it works. So when we look at applying the mud, there's a couple different options and it really depends on how big of a space you've got and how much equipment you have access to. Uh, rollers are great, so you can kind of just get your mud all in there, roll your area, smooth it out. You want to go with a thick nap, and Level 5 actually has a brand new composite roller that they're going to be coming out with that's perfect for this application later this year. And then of course, the tried and true way is just a knife and a pan, you put it on by hand and then wipe it after. And then there's also, you know, you can use a big spray ring and spray your mud on that way, but not everybody has access to that. So it really depends on how big your job is and how big your crew is. So let's go ahead, we're gonna do some mud and uh, show the mud consistency and start putting the mud on the wall. So when we're looking at using mud, I am using plus three. It's soft, it's sandable, it's creamy, and you can get it pretty thin and it'll go on really nicely and light on great. So my consistency is pretty thin here. Yeah, I think we're gonna be using a big blade to lie this down, so we don't wanna be going crazy thick because it's not gonna turn out very nice and we're gonna be struggling with it. Go ahead and get an even amount of mud applied. Now I'm gonna take my blade, I'm gonna use pressure, and glide across. The nice thing about these blades if you've got a shallow area, you can just kind of take a little bit of your mud and kind of move it around and feather it in there. But this is how we do it with the roller. Of course, we come over and clean up the other side. So now we're gonna do just straight up pan and knife. I've got my 10 inch here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply. Smooth layer. Trying to stay as consistent as possible. Same thing again. I'm just gonna go angle pull across. So when we're looking at skipping blades, a little overview of thinner mud is better. It was about pancake batter. We can use rollers, we can use knives and pans, we can use sprayers to apply the mud, really whatever you have access to. And these obviously give an almost mirrored glass finish. It's great for level fiving, it's great for pulling butts, flats, whatever you're running into that you're having problems with, and of course, going over existing textures. So grab yourself a pair, try them out. Remember, replaceable blades, so if you do drop them or nick them, you can just go ahead and replace that blade housing, not the whole entire um, skimming blade. Anyway, that's it for me, and I hope to see you guys using some of these blades on your own projects.